Hello, welcome. We're doing some some Super Nintendo with Lost Vikings and Cybernator. I'm Carl of Nintendo Deep Dive. Now to everyone on video or live stream, blessings upon you from Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Anyway, let's uh let's get into it. So it took me a little while to warm up to this game and I did for a bit, but now I'm actually starting to get, unfortunately I'm starting to get a bit cold on it. And that might just be me, it might just be the manner in which I'm playing it. Who knows, ow! Okay, let's just, I'm gonna cheat a little on this game. Because uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Also, not what I wanted to do. Hey, get. I let the cats in here. That was a mistake on my part. <sighs> so, yeah, I, you know, I've been thinking about <laughs> this game and puzzle platformers, and I've done, come to the conclusion that, generally speaking, I just don't like puzzle platformers to begin with. Um, I find their puzzles are watered down to make room for the platforming, and then the platforming's watered down for the puzzles. So really, I don't know, everything, uh, everything feels slow and not particularly, not particularly, uh, I don't know, the movements, or the puzzles, cerebrally, it's just not that intelligent. Um. Like, it's fine. Like, there's been a couple clever moments, don't get me wrong, but... Eh. Oh, boy, what are we doing here? Huh. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm just I'm not in love with the game. Though, a lot of that might be, like, a bit subjective. And, you know, every what he says to your enjoyment of a game is entirely subjective. I don't know. I think there is, if there's a way that developers consistently and reliably make games then there must be some sort of objective um, truisms. Oh, crap. I blew that. Um, yeah, there must be some sort of objectivity if there's such a consistency exists within the methodology. But anyway, in this case, maybe it's just that I really don't like puzzle platformers. And I don't know if I necessarily like... Oh, gosh, this game makes me yawn. Oh. So, I'm sorry. What? So yeah, maybe it's just me. But... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. My feelings on this game are that... It's a bit slow, like not in the speed, but just sort of in the speed of operation. Like a lot of what this game is, it's like similar to Triforce Heroes. Hmm. Hmm. Very low energy, not good for a streamer. Um, similar to Triforce Heroes, playing it by yourself, where you're just um, <laughs> moving all the pieces alone. And I don't know if this game, from all accounts, it sounds like it was intended as a single player game where you control multiple pieces but there is a two player mode that goes with it I okay I'm just gonna 
So I, maybe I'm playing it wrong. And you know, I always do get annoyed when I put time into a game and then have to conclude that uh, the manner in which I played it is not representative of the product. That, that annoys me somewhat. All that work and I'm like, ah, well, probably just, probably just played it wrong. I do, I have found that lately, like in 1993, of all years for the Super Nintendo, whew, that's a, definitely a factor with this one. It's like, I'm, maybe I shouldn't be playing it in single player, though it doesn't seem like it would be that optimized for two player and maybe it being two player wouldn't really solve any of my issues. Um, but it, it might make it better. Maybe that is the, the factor. Who knows? I wonder. I'm just blatantly cheating here. And anyway, what was my thought I had? Um, so for this game, it's like, yeah, maybe I need to be playing it multiplayer. And then for, uh, for King Arthur's World, it's like, maybe I need to be playing it with a, a mouse and mouse pad. And I'd enjoy it more, which I assume that was the case. Now there is probably a rhyme and reason how to play it perfectly with the D-pad, that is, it is cumbersome for the moderately skilled. And then I'm just doing a little bit of Street Fighter 2 way ahead of time. And I'm starting to think that the... The, um... <laughs> the D-pad is not inherently good at doing those attack inputs and so now I need to look at getting a fighting stick and then I'm like oh well I'm not playing it on the Super Nintendo like the original Super Nintendo so I can't get any of those fighting sticks I need to get uh <laughs> oh, I'm playing this on the SNES Classic so it takes those little Wii adapter um it has those little Wii adapter uh outlets and so now I'm like, oh, well, what fight sticks did they have for the Wii? They had one for Tatsunoku versus Capcom, maybe. And so, you know, in my head, there's just all these, like, supplemental things that I need to actually get the, to get the optimal experience. Bow, no. I wonder if that's doable. Okay, let's just, I have a better idea. Nah, we'll just give up. Matthew Mancino, thank you for stopping by. I was not ignoring you. I just had to hold on to that spiel. So, yeah, anyway, I don't love this game. It's okay. It might be better than I'm giving it credit for. It's better than I enjoy it. Like, I really, a little part of me actually would rather be playing King Arthur's World. Even though in King Arthur's World, I was complaining about the fact that all the guys move, moving on their own set you up for disaster, but I'm kind of much preferring moving them, having them move on their own at my prompting than having to manually move these guys. Um, which a lot of this game, like in the moment to moment, it's not that much puzzle solving, it's just kind of moving them as a group, which is a bit dull. And if you don't die, it's not the end of the world to move them once, but if like, there's a word, there's a term I need to coin. Not sure if there's a better term that's been coined, but like turnaround on failure. The turnaround on failure, basically how long it takes you to get back to where you were 
after you failed. And, you know, I think there should be definitely a certain amount of turnaround to add some weight to failure. But if there's, if it's too much fuss to turn around after you die, then it can be, it can seem like the... Can seem like the <laughs> the negatives are starting to outweigh the positives, which is why I hate limited continues because those, those are the the harshest end of the spectrum for that kind of thing. Where it's like, oh, the farther you get, the longer it's going to take you to get back to where you were, because there is no inherent checkpoints. And so, for a game like this, how that relates to this is every time you die, you have to just kind of do this. Oh gosh. Beginning to see I made a mistake. Yep. <laughs> Kinda need, need my shield guy. So why did they want me? Crap. Hmm. Why do they want me doing certain things here? Where was I? So. Yeah, just like older games, I think their turnaround on failure is a bit too long. It, Nintendo's already kind of ironed that out by the time of Super Mario 3, so good on them, but some of these older games, including this one, it's like dying and failing. It's just like, it's like, okay, come on. Especially when it's not, it's not really inherently fun moving these guys as a group. Which is why I question if this is actually a intended as a single player experience. What do you think, Matthew? Was this intended as a single player experience? And the thing about this game's puzzles too is a lot of it isn't really anything that complicated. It's all just a matter of sequence. So once you have that sequence figured out, repeating it isn't inherently that uh, fulfilling. See, that's what I thought too. I thought this was like balanced to be Oh gosh. Okay, again. And this is <laughs> this is kind of my point of this game. Like I literally I don't really use rewind anywhere in a, in most other games, but just having to repeat this action with all these characters is just a bit it's a bit dull. It's also kind of like harsh in this game that you really don't have in Mario you have mushrooms and power-ups. Donkey Kong you have that second character. Castlevania, you have health. And and um, whatever. Like in this game, yeah, you get one hit to, and one of your characters dies and that's all the way back to the start. Which they do their best to make that Kind of a painless turnaround but just with all the movement of these characters it gets it gets to be just a little wearying and that's why like yeah sometimes certain games it's like how they treat failure is what they live or die on and so for people who have played these games endlessly as kids and they don't really fail at them anymore they're not really going to understand how that affects the experience and so generally i think for those I would describe them as, let's face it, just kind of try, the, the tryhards who are good at everything, they're not going to experience the negatives of kind of long turnarounds 
um, when it comes to failure. Uh, did this SNES ship with two controllers? I knew it had two controller ports. Oh, come on. This is what I'm talking about. Just like, I don't, like, I just like the amount of yeah, setup that I'd have to redo to get to this point again. It's just like, ugh. I guess, you know, don't die. That sounds like a fire truck. I do not know if this nest ship with two controllers or not. That'd be very nice of them if it did. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Oh shit. All right, I guess I did it. <laughs> and so that's my main issue with the game is just like with two players that would definitely mitigate it you'd still have to have some person controlling the third, and I wonder what that would look like. I doubt there would be split screen, um, but it would help. But King Arthur's World had a similar issue with for me. Just like a very long turnaround on failure, and it it just makes things a bit dull. Oh boy. No, that's not who I wanted. That is ridiculously generous of them, Matthew. That's like, I don't even think it was that much. I think it was like only $200 too. Come here. Either way, in whatever capacity, the SNES had the ability to have two controllers, so. Fall damage here, too. That's pretty good stuff. Hmm. So, regardless, like, a little part of me doesn't like this game, but I may be playing it very suboptimally. And that was also the case with, um, <laughs> that was also the case with. Uh, King Arthur's World, but I didn't want to spend eighty dollars on a on a mouse peripheral. You know, Matthew, that was a pure guess or just knowledge deeply buried within me. No idea. So, yeah, this is not. I was excited for this game, but it's it's fine. Like I may even beat it on my own time, but. Definitely this will be the last time streaming of it. I think I'm like in the halfway mark, which is generally when I feel comfortable judging games. Right. Oh wait. I may have done this wrong. Oh, 
But I think yeah, between the platforming and the puzzles, I don't know if this game has wowed me. And that's typically the case with puzzle platformers. What do I do? Oh, come on. Ugh. But yeah, it's just that the, the restarting thing really, really is just kind of a downer because it doesn't, it doesn't move fast enough like a Mario game or with that joy, like it doesn't have that joy of movement. So restarting things is a bit, eh. And then like when I think about other puzzle games, like, which I'm not too familiar with, I could go into Zelda, but let's look at Mole Mania, which is a pretty good puzzle game. It was, it was one that I kind of didn't love though, but it was, it was good. And Mole Mania was a game where if you lost progress, you really hadn't gained progress anyway, because most of a puzzle game is, takes place in your head like it's about standing still and moving the pieces around long before you ever have to do any kind of real real setup. So in this game, it's a little different where there is a, a bit of setup. And that makes it, ugh, I don't know, less enjoyable. Of course, with Bullmania and other games like Tetris, my complaint about them is that they lack greater context. And this one definitely has more of that context to make it more charming and visually interesting, but not enough to really justify the mechanics. It's not a bad game by any stretch, but it's not one that I inherently love either. Maybe I need to glide to grab that key. And it is interesting to think about this game that this is a game of limitation. Like you have characters that they have one, one character's worth of movesets split between three characters. And so, in a weird way, you're, you're limited, which isn't a bad thing. I like limitations. I don't like the new Zeldas because you don't have enough limitation. But how much, how much limitation can there be? Help! <laughs> I don't want to be up there. So those are just kind of my running thoughts on it. And also I find with a game that's like more fast paced, like I don't think they really lack in, it's not like the puzzles they have in Super Mario World are less complicated than this. Most of them just involve uh, execution, but that makes them more inherently fun to fail at. like platforming execution and even more still require you to, you know, use your nose to sniff things out, which is a lot of this game is just a lot of this game. There's a little bit of sniffing out secrets, but it's mostly just sequence finding the right sequence, which is fine, but it's not. lost my train of thought it's fine this yeah I was talking about sequence it's well and good enough to like work out the sequence on a first or second go but if you keep dying and you have to like repeat that sequence it's just a bit tiring 
Okay, so Matthew, I don't know if you and I are on the same page because I was, when I think about this game in terms of problem solving, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it's much greater than, uh, say Mario World. Um, but it's nowhere near the level that that's a uh, that's a mole mania or something like that is or even some of the puzzles in Zelda games which Zelda is not typically puzzle heavy but there will be examples like the puzzles in Twilight Princess where the one you, the one with the master sword which there is opportunity to there is opportunity to uh, fudge that one just kind of fail forward though you might get yourself more stuck but the best solution in that one then that's the one where you like move the, st the, the statues move inversely to you and there's two of them and so with that one uh Oh, come on. I'm not I I'm not even going to count that. Like that's stupid. Oh. Okay, that one would have been on me. Um now That one the best course of action. Like, a real puzzle game is actually just staring at a problem and working it out in your mind more than anything. Um. Oh, come on, go away. The health really doesn't matter because I just have these silly zombies. Or mummies. They're not zombies, they're mummies. Jeez. Get it together, Carl. So yeah, what I'm saying is I don't know if this game really takes it much farther than Donkey Kong Country would with some of the problems you have to solve in that. Which... You know, I mean, it's fine and all, but I kind of do wish the puzzles were, uh, I wish the game was a literal, little more cerebral and all of that. All right, you can have the thing. Again, not saying the game is a bad game. I'm just explaining why, like, I don't, why I don't enjoy it, and, like, if it was two-player, I think a lot of the friction I feel with it would be alleviated, potentially. But I might actually like King Arthur's World more, despite the fact that it's more... I don't know, it's more tr pesky. I think the game, uh, I find that game has a few more toys at your disposal, even if I didn't use half of them. And, and, uh, and it just kind of has a bigger, broader scope, and I may like the visual of it more. Uh oh, uh oh. But yeah, I'm beginning to see how this game is a bit cruel because it's like you have three characters that you need all three of them alive, and they all die in one hit. It kind of just. It, it bothers me a bit. Um, see, that's what I wonder about the third Viking. And that's why I'm thinking, like, 
you would still have the same problem I'm having now, but you would have one less piece to move. It would be, I think the third Viking would just be whoever moves it. Whoever decides to take control of him has control of him. That's the simple matter of it. Of course, if you're playing with your little brother, who's a, who's a child, or, you know, as I would say more harshly, an idiot. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh, I don't want to die like this. Oh, come on. Ah. And yeah, see, I don't think it would be a Viking duo game. I think you would have that third person floating because in the Genesis version, there is three players somehow. Okay. And here's my proof that going through this again is going to be a bit painful. Oh, no. No. Ah! He's in and among us. I also have to think about, like, if this is two-player, it's probably two-player in a Donkey Kong Country kind of way. It's not going to be split-screen, probably. So, it also tells me that a lot of puzzles... Well, it's really... I wonder if it would be split-screen, because there's that one puzzle in the last level, or that one thing where I had to make the shield guy go all the way to the bottom, separated from his friends, how would you do that? How would you do that two-player? Maybe you could do with... You could probably get away with having Eric the Swift and Olaf go down that way and then leave the sword guy at the top. Otherwise, yeah, I'm thinking because it's designed to also be two-player that a lot of the puzzles are going to be, um, they're going to be, what do you want to call it? Hey, get, 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 get out of here. This is why I don't have you in my room. You broke a lamp today, you little prick. Don't bop me on the nose. Don't do it. You bad kitty. You're bad. All right, you can stay. You gotta stay, though. Don't mind me, I'm just talking to the cat. Some people don't talk to cats. I find that odd. <laughs> Not as odd as talking to cats, but odd. And yeah, I, I would think, as you're saying, it would be on the same screen, so that would also be cumbersome so I'm thinking of the two-player wouldn't it could it wouldn't necessarily alleviate some of the issues I'm having so those are my thoughts on Lost Vikings if I was to rate it maybe it'd be like a 6.5 out of 10 uh Today I watched these cats just like, I looked up just in time to see them like hang off the lampshade of the lamp. It's not my lamp. And then knock it over. It's a big lamp, a lot of glass. I was not, oh, come on. Ugh. Ugh. Not a lot of time to jump off there. So yeah, this is the part where I kind of get bored of the game. It's just moving these characters in this one after the other. It's like, okay, like, this shouldn't be. A bobcat. Those are like lynxes, but they're not as big, right? Isn't that what a bobcat is? I'm 90% sure that's what bobcats are. And they're like, maybe they're 50 pounds. They got crazy eyes, though. 
like that big eyed look the cats give you. I think bobcats have that in spades. <sighs> They're small enough that you could probably grab them and cuddle them, big enough that they'll cut you up good for it. But they're so tempting with those big kitty eyes, aren't they? Also, you say bobcat and I immediately think it's snowing. Because lynxes and bobcats can't be anywhere but in the snow with their big paws. In, um, in, in summertime, they just like literally stop existing. Less than 50 pounds. Okay, so a lynx is like, it's different than a bobcat anyway, but it's actually like significantly larger than, so. Now yeah, you almost could be a little kitty kitty. So if they're less than 50 pounds, I mean, they must have still appeared quite lo much, uh, much larger than a cat <laughs> when it ran in front of your truck. Like bigger than... I remember I was in my loader years back and I saw, I was like... And this is, this is how your mind works when you're like trying to, you see an animal that you haven't seen, you're like, and this is how I was. I was like, cat, no, dog, no, badger. Because <laughs> I was like, too big to be a cat. It's a dog. No, it's too big to be, too small to be a dog. And I'm like, no, it's a badger, which apparently badgers are common, but I haven't seen one ever. Oh yeah, those are fun. I gotta admit, mountain lions are, they're not very large compared to your, some of your bigger cats, but they are mighty impressive. Like they look very strong for their size, like with how, with their claws, with how big their paws are, like their limbs. The limbs on a mountain lion, which I assume is, okay, I'm not, I know is just the same as what I call a cougar, is they look strong. Now, distracted thinking about cats <laughs> happens to the best of us I don't think mountain a lion attacks are terribly common but if they do attack you PSA you will lose Okay, let's just beat this level, call it a day, and then we're gonna move on to Cybernator, because that's what I promised. I hate these guys who jump, because they kind of just throw, maybe my shield guy is just better off not being around. It makes sense that this level would be a touch longer, but um, anyway, I want to get through it. But yeah, that's definitely one of my, um, one of my things I look at. Turnaround for failure. If you have like a really long turnaround on failure, I think you've made a mistake with your game design. Ah. Oh, anyway, I wanted to talk about this on stream. Pretty much three years or even four years after everybody else, I watched Squid Games finally. And, you know, it's maybe I'm just living under a rock. And so I just knew nothing about it out of my own. What do you want to call it? <laughs> of my own volition or maybe when it comes down to like TikTok and things like that they kind of bury the lead on things because squid games is a lot better and a lot different than i thought it would be um i thought it was going to be oh gosh 
I thought it was going to be uh, dystopian. It's actually more clandestine, if anything. Um, I thought it was similar to like Hunger Games. It really has nothing to do with Hunger Games. It's a lot. It's a lot different than that. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Ow! Oh. Like it's not a. Yeah, it's not anything really like Hunger Games, and it actually. Because of that, it makes sense to me in a way that Hunger Games, which I'm sure if I read the books, which lots of young adults books, so I'm not going to read it. Obviously, I'm not ever actually going to read them, but <laughs> the idea of like having just to remind people that they got defeated, they have like tribute or whatever. It's like, I don't know, that seems like, ah, anyway, Hunger Games always struck me as a bit stupid, <laughs> but Squid Games makes a lot more sense and more than that not only does it make sense in, in, in a lot of ways it also is a game it's a it's a very endearing show um like a lot of a lot of the big differences that make it more interesting than your typical i don't know battle royale setup which is what i really just thought it was is the is the fact that the people there are have are vo they volunteer to go there and there's i don't know about modern precedent but there's also historical precedent for that in the in the coliseums of rome or the arenas of rome the coliseum is one specific uh place <laughs> um regardless though yeah it's very very interesting and it's clearly like a metaphor for society and a metaphor that actually its roots run pretty deep. Like you can go a while on that metaphor without actually torturing it. Anyway, um, did you like Squid Games, Matthew? And you watched it with your family. I don't know. I figured your, your kids were a little young for that. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't know. Every kid eventually watches that one violent movie. But yeah, way not what I thought it was. And I'm glad it wasn't that. And I, I liked it quite a bit, even though typically there's things about Asian television <laughs> um, that me, such as excessive flashbacking, but whatever. Um, I don't even know if I saw all the memes. It's just, uh, if you see a bunch of people in some kind of life or death game, you just sort of assume it's some sort of dystopian thing or like some kind of battle royale. Like so many of those... So many of those young adult dystopian books are, have some kind of, oh boy, I had the wrong guy, have some kind of challenge associated with it, like <laughs> whatever the Maze Runner is. Like I couldn't tell you what the Maze Runner is about. Like why would anybody do, like why would anybody have a maze that people run in? Like uh, it's, again, I think that's, I think that's all stupid. I think I saw, I don't know if it was about Hunger Games, but it was about like, the world of Divergent is stupid. It's like, yeah, it is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you would set up a society like that? But such is the way. Anyway, um, I, I, I guess, you know, if anything, I probably just had my head in the sand about Squid Games. It was a foreign film out of, you know, Korea. I think I knew it was Korea ahead of time. And... Um, yeah, it was like a battle royale kind of thing. So, but the, here's the thing: it's not a battle royale movie. Um, the fact that the like I'm not gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get too into spoilers, but a lot of the games they play are like old kids' games, of course. So that kind of keeps the challenges from devolving into uh, just a chaotic melee, which if you think about Hunger Games, like Hunger Games is just, you just kill everybody till there's one left. And so there's really not that much wiggle room. In Squid Games, the 
that there's going to be one left is not inherently true. And the point of the game isn't to kill each other often. You might die, but you're not going to kill each other. And, you know, <laughs> if you read The Maze Runner, I don't know if it's any good like it strikes me as a touch contrived but or like who knows what it is i don't know like i think i watched hunger games recently went through it a bit like a year back and i'm like okay i probably enjoy this more than i remember enjoying it and that might just be because movies now aren't that good <sighs> who knows Uh, shit. No! Oh, are you kidding me? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we don't have time to re-go through this. Like, I'm trying to think that the one I should jump to is the next... Well, like thought there was some kind of logic to this. Oh, come on. Yeah, this part sucks. Oh, come on. See, this is... Uh, okay. Problem with this game is I don't really think... Like, I, I don't really want to be, bo be bothering with everything else because this one part here is just a bit dull. No! Uh, and I'm a slippery prick with this guy. I'm sorry, what what do I do? Okay, so you enjoyed Squid Games though, Matthew. Um Anyway, for the sake of time, we're just gonna cheat here because I don't wanna I don't wanna bother with any of those puzzles. You've seen them. You know what this game is. I'm usually I am actually quite averse to cheating as I call it, but we gotta play we have other games to play. Um so I what I thought of Squid Games was it's I mean the second season's probably a mistake, but the first season would be the best television I've seen since Better Call Saul. Like, I thought it was really good. And really, I think the the metaphor that is squid games is that basically it's just a metaphor for society it's like society is cruel and yet despite it being cruel we play it by its rules anyway what are we in 1930s henry ford factory Um, and that's the thing about the fact is that they're all volunteering for, they don't have to play these games, though, if they want to stop playing the games, they need a majority vote, which again, there's like sort of a demo democratic element to society in that sometimes people are, um, sometimes people are, you know, oppressed by the masses, like they're pressed into what <laughs> laws are determined by the majority so you know what what's that word it's not oppression by the majority but like it's something like that but anyway it's it's a pretty basic metaphor basic of, but effective metaphor for society and i think squid games does a really great job of that because kind of like saying the people who play it you know it's like they're 
in a way it's it's like they're complicit in the death but if they don't play and how and actually let me go let me go back so in the same way that people who are playing the squid games are complicit in the deaths of others um so too we in society are somehow you know there's like an element of complicity in the um in the suffering of others or whatever in whatever in whatever capacity you want to look at it but if you don't play the games then you are essentially a outcast you're the you're people who are basically homeless you're the rejects of the world and so the minute what causes a lot of the people to go back into playing the games is once they get released and there's no consequence to them being released is that they just realize that the life they went back to even though they were risking risking their life previously sucks and so yeah in the same way it's like why do we play why do we contribute to the rot of society in a way by playing by its rules because if we don't we have nothing yeah um yeah matthew they were all desperate people and that was like and they were desperate because yeah they like represent it's in a weird way the squid games are is like a way for them to be reintegrated into society because yeah when they stop like after they quit the first time which is interesting in that scene because there's a character who kind of his role changes partway through so one of his actions earlier on is actually like makes him actually less evil in a sense oh come on what if i stop it with my there's no way that should have worked oh <laughs> okay i thought the big stomper was a bridge too far but you know i was curious um Anyway, this is the next next thing of Lost Vikings. While I play more of it on my own, maybe. But I'd say this is like a 6.5 out of 10 game. It's fine, but it's not truly good. Um, but if, yeah, for Squid Games, the most interesting aspect about it, like beyond just the sort of societal metaphor, because again, if they don't play, then they're nobody. But if they do play, then they have a chance to be somebody. You know, it's that great metaphor for the rat race as harsh as it is but it's interesting how watching that movie it's very easy to forget that the people who are running it are evil because they the way they just kind of conform to their role and because of the fact that the people who are playing the games have given them permission to operate that role all of a sudden makes their how evil they are kind of it makes it makes it easy to forget that uh no i wouldn't say i mean that it's more like i think i mean really in a, in a lot of ways this is this squid games is just a less funny version of the plot of the rat race <laughs> by the Zucker brothers. Or I think they wrote it, or maybe they directed that one, but no, it's more like these, the desperate people, by playing the games, it's almost like they are given a chance to be a part of society again. Like, even though not directly, like, it's metaphorical, but when they, whenever they stop playing the games, they become nobody again. But when they keep playing them, they all of a sudden, like, they fill a role within the games, within their teams, but they also, like, have an incentive. They, they actually have, like, um, something to look forward to, so... In the same way, in society, we have this, like, or not entirely. I mean, again, it is just sort of a metaphor, I would imagine. But uh, I'll, I'll continue on. Like, but society, in the same way that society is a, is a rule-based system 
um, that's structured with winners and losers. So too, these people who have just been nothing but losers and they really don't, and so they're not even really playing anymore. They, they're getting that sec, they're getting that second chance to be a part of society by one winning lots of money and, and becoming a success, a successful member of society in by that, um, by that means anyway. And just that they're kind of like, I don't know, they're, they're, they're contributing to something like both to themselves and to others, I guess. I'm kind of, kind of losing my thought on unfortunately watching these big stompers or whatever. Um, but I don't think it's really about like, in a weird way, there's like almost like a sympathy that the captors have for their captives. And so there's like a twisted, there's actually a twisted kind of, um, I can't even think of the, what would be the word? Uh, not sympathy, not benevolence. Anyway, I can't think of the word. It's along those lines. I thought it was very interesting all the same because again, like, when the the difference between this and Hunger Games is that when the people who are being um, essentially killed and their lives are at stake, when they give the people who are doing it permission to do it, now it's this weird thing. It's this like kind of weird culture to it. There's this weird... Um, there's a weird sense of ethics in it or cultural ethics. And so that's why that, that show was very interesting to me. And it was very believable because in a historical context, um, gladiators, though I think some of them might be slaves taken from Gaul, most gladiators were gladiators by volunteer. In fact, they had to pass laws to stop the equestrian class, which is the class between the plebs and the and the senate, the senatorial class, so essentially the knightly class. They uh, they actually wanted to start becoming gladiators, and some of them were, and so they had to pass laws to stop them from doing that because it was something that only slaves were supposed to do. It was beneath them. And of course, you have the prime example of Commodus, son of uh, Marcus Aurelius, actually um, doing a lot of uh, spectacle. Can't think, I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Commodus being a spectacle in the gladiatory arena himself. So there's, it's, it's very, Squid Games was very interesting beyond just, beyond just like bombastic violence, beyond just like cutthroat battle royalness. And you know, as someone who's like also very Christian, I found that it was very, heartwarming in a lot of ways with very likable characters and some unlikable characters and it, it it had a lot more to offer than just your typical relativistic view on morality that movies and shows often go for i'm going to switch over to the wii u to play some cybernator since i haven't touched the controller in a bit here I know I probably didn't make total sense in my synopsis of Squid Games, but in my thoughts, of the synopsis of my thoughts, rather, but I really did like it. And I thought it was like a very easy to follow metaphor that even dum-dums could follow, basically. I mean, well, not dum-dums. I mean, like, it's easy to miss things if you're not looking for them, but I found it very, very interesting. Okay, let's let's get going here. But yeah, what I really liked about it was that really it's not 
<laughs> you know, it has a lot more to say when the entire point of the game they're playing isn't just last man standing, kill each other. There's an undercurrent of that, definitely. And that represents, you know, the uh, the expedient nature of society. But again, there's also like, there's a structure beyond that. And it goes into like the fact that they're playing kids games is interesting because it also points to the fact that we as people from when we're very little like to structure ourselves and like to play games. We like to, we like to exist within structures of our own making sometimes where there are winners and losers, you know, and it's why even the idea of like communism is sort of a funny idea because it's just like, it's not really how we are. We don't, we, we like the idea of stakes. And even me, I like the idea of stakes in video games to a degree. Um, especially medium rare ones. Uh, so, <laughs> it, yeah, I really... I thought, it, I thought it was a phenomenal show, and it was much more phenomenal than just, oh, hey, a bunch of people get mowed down during red light, green light. That's... It's definitely like I'm anticipating what game they're going to play next for sure. But um, everything around the everything around the games is what makes it interesting. Uh, do, 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 do. Where am I? Oh, okay, here we go. So this came out in April of 1993. In Japan, it's called... Assault Suit Falcon. They re released like an updated version of this on the Switch. It has some story content. This is by Konami. Beautiful Konami. They're doing a lot of work. They also did Buster Bus Loose, which I kind of just decided to opt out of for time. Um, I've heard good things about this game. I hope there's a continue system or a checkpoint system of some kind. That's fair enough. I I could probably watch it again. I don't know if there's really a call to have them do a second season, but it feels like, I don't know, it feels weird. Like it could be interesting, but. Hmm. Neither have I, Matthew. Neither have I. Okay, that's. What's happening? How is the game volume? Nineties seem to be pretty big on uh, Max, which I don't know if I love Max, but like as a gameplay, mechanically, but visually, I mean, they are pretty cool. They're entirely um, overcomplicated compared to a tank because a tank is just better. <laughs> Can't trip a tank or whatever. Max are cool looking. I don't think this is a long game. Oh, wait, well, we just rammed in there. Oh, boy. Oop, you got 360. Okay.
Ooh, this is cool. <laughs> Can I jump on this? I kind of missed whatever I was supposed to do there. No, oh, boy, that hurt. Ooh. So yeah, this is a salt or a cybernator. There was a game like this that my brother really liked. That was a spin-off of Front Mission. That's similar to this. I wonder if it's the same developer. It looks similar. Oh, jeez. Yeah, look at all the damage we're doing here. This music's pretty killer, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so dashing is just, hey, get around fast, which I'm okay with. Kinda wanna land on him and give him the what for. Pretty zippy. <laughs> Do I know where I'm going? No, I don't. Pretty cool. Seems we can only go forward. This is punch. This game's pretty cool. Do I just have to keep shooting that, I wonder? <laughs> Saying something about that, then I just completely ignored it. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. That's what I like about mech games. It is all, a lot of the animation. I feel like that was the selling point of. Blaster Master. Which otherwise, I mean, <laughs> if I wasn't in the tank and I was in those top down sections, I was just not having it. I'm gonna try to go forward because I can't seem to put a dent on that. Whew. 
Oh, that's fun. I feel pretty cool right now. This is the best game Konami's made on the Super Nintendo? Well, I would say that Super Castlevania is a tough one to beat, but this is this is pretty cool. I know I know one thing people mention that's kind of bad about it is just that you'll play the game and and then the game will just stop dead for some dialogue. Yeah. I'm just gonna punch ya. Give it to me, baby. What was that? Oof. I wonder if that red bar is my health. Probably is. I have not played a lick of this prior to booting it up. So we're just gonna learn all about it here and now. This is box. Like how as big as I probably am, I'm still kind of small. Oh yeah. Give it to me. Boom. Ooh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Slide punch. That dash is pretty sick. This is pretty cool. I'm feeling joy again, oh my goodness. Not apprehensive. What's the word? Uh, I mean, I was feeling a little bit of joy with other games, but... 93, I think the best game I played was... <sighs> Energy chip, what does that do? Oh boy. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, with the other games in 93, I was enjoying them. I think the best one, I think my favorite game so far was Star Fox, which I'm not going to play anymore because the third path is savage, and I don't mind it because guess what? They let you beat the game without ever having to deal with that, so it's well enough. So this isn't really a platformer in the way that really falling to your death isn't what they're going for. No doubt this is gonna become much more difficult in, um, in the second level. But for the time being, oof! Giving you a nice first level to just feel powerful. False sense of security and all. Oh. Ooh. Slide. Slide! Boom. I think in Mega Man you also had this effect where your Mega Man X, you also had this effect where you could you know, take chunks out of the wall, so that's cool. Oh, here we go. Just gonna talk to me. Oh. What did they say? Destroy it? Ow! I'm gonna die. Oh boy.
I'm not doing well for health here. Um, I don't know if it's multiplayer, Matthew. If it was, it's available. Ah, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know there was a timer on that. Oh, no. Oh, no, there's credits. Ew, gross. Well, that's, that's not good. Okay, well, this game is now less interesting to me with the whole credits thing. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think this is multiplayer. There's no, there's no option for it. Okay, this is pretty cool. I am annoyed once more that we have some kind of credit system, which kind of blows. I just kind of, I don't, I don't like, I don't like limited continues. They're a bad idea. No one really likes limited continues. In the other game that was in Japan, you could actually leave. You could actually leave your suit and throw grenades. That's cool. Looks like this is going to be a game I'm going to have to dry run before I stream it because, yeah, limited continues. Ah, uh, it's very disappointing. Guess I should have known that because there wasn't any continue option or password option. Boom. Ooh, that felt good. Oh my goodness, once you hit slide, you can go backwards and forwards. That's pretty sick. What is a cybernator? No idea. The Americans market thought it would go better than go well. Go over more well. <laughs> I guess I did, can't put. There's no real phrase I'm looking for that actually fits what I'm trying to say. I thought it would go better in the states if it was a uh, uh, not assault suit Vulcan. You know what? You wanna come on, your punk. Kind of wish I could crush through the environment. Oh man. Boom. Oh wow, that guy's taking a beating. Boom. Kitty. Give me B. Oh. Go over better. Yes, let's I I got I got early dementia, Matthew. <laughs>
can't punch up. Okay, so I guess it's being hoisted up. I thought it was like going up and down, not just straight up. Oh boy, I thought that's a pretty, that's a pretty rough looking <laughs> explosion. Satellite orbit, yep, enemy spaceship. Rife with floating asteroids. Yeah, I'm getting all of this. Anyway, if you like what you're watching, please leave a like. If you don't, well, no need to bother then. Don't run into roids. Um, okay, well, <laughs> I won't. Let's try them with steroids, and yeah, I kind of need them. They definitely do, Matthew. I'm just wondering. Um, oh, if, like, <laughs> that's just first level ease. Ow! Oh, man. Oh, man. Ah! Which it is. <laughs> no, they're going to make me read all this again. No. Yeah, they're just... It's always smart to give the person the illusion that they're just going to have a great time in the first level before you sweep their legs out from under them. Oh boy. What were they saying about manual control? happening. It's like I'm floating. This is pretty frickin' cool. Those are mines. Ow, ow, ow. Don't tell me about things I already know. Come here, you. Some health missiles. 
Ooh. I think that was health. This is sick. Ah. Can't get that good little guy. Ah. the kind of missiles at home see typically when you say missile i assume it's gonna home because rockets ow, are the ones that don't home oh boy ah <laughs> Because that thing's just that railgun's just firing. Maybe I would want to destroy it. So I don't think I have a slide in this one, not really. Or slides compromised. Oh boy. Oh no. Boy. Oh, it's a real gun. Oh, boy. Come here, you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Just duck for a bit. Jake. I'm dead. I'm a dead man. <laughs> it's just... Oh, man. Oh, why is there a credit system? It's so irritating. This game might be cool enough that I don't care. Hopefully it's short, though. Oh, yeah, there's no checkpoints, though. That's... <sighs> That's a bit terrible. No. Don't run into asteroids, they say. <sighs> Gosh, I sound like that cocky rookie that dominates all this crap. Come here. Tear your gizzard out. little turks take more beating than the big ones in the last level. Oh no. <laughs> okay, what's up? Let's see what happens when we game over. 
Back to the title screen. Ugh. Why do they do this to me? It's the thing, I really wanted that game Metal Warriors, but I'm like, they also have a... Why do they have a limited continue system in that one, too? Ah, oh, whatever. So, you, between this, Metal Warriors... Um... Yeah, this, Metal Warriors, and... Front Mission... Gun Hazard. Maybe you could include the Power Ranger fighting game. Fighting edition where you're just the big mech thing. You got... Um... <laughs> you got four mech titles on the Super Nintendo at least, so... Not including the turn-based ones. Like front, front mission. Take that. Oh. I'm not gonna mess around here. Boom. Eat it. These turrets take less of a beating than those little round ones did. Doesn't feel fair. Are the numbers going up or down on my weapons? I thought my weapon was a five, now it's a four. You want to get to level one. That's interesting. I wonder if the if it's a limited continue game. Then I wonder if the powers um, that you obtain in one level carry over into the next, or maybe just between lives. slide more because it's cool if there's one reason to do anything it's because it's cool Definitely try to finish this one, even with the limited continues. No doubt, curse to annoy me. But what can you do? There we go. Closer than I wanted it to be. Batman 
Okay. can't see myself. Got some things heading right for me. No, it doesn't seem like you carry guns. Kind of a little bit of a hard time here. Oh boy. Oh, I'm so floaty. Ow! Oh, no. <laughs> Don't want to get caught there. Well, this ain't good. health. Oh, I almost had it. <clears throat> I'm a fast reader. <laughs> I imagine there's some facetiousness in that statement. Oh, boy. Oh boy, I'm taking hits.
Oh, crap. Well, the text is like a lot of, it's like a lot of story stuff. Like I haven't, <laughs> or maybe they're telling me something important, but regardless. Ugh. I've read it once, I don't want to read it again. It's a lot of projectiles I gotta keep an eye on here. Oh crap. Konami makes maybe the best graphics on the Super Nintendo. Maybe outside of Nintendo themselves, but they may even have them beat. Oh boy. What I need is some health. It's pretty savage. I mean, I have enough health that it's not the end of the world. It may be contributing to this next part where I die, though, the first section. Shit. Shit. Shot it again. Uh, that's annoying. I don't see the thing I'm having problem with in the floaty section is my guns don't really my 360 degree control seems to be hampered or gone. I don't really know. Don't really know. There's an, there is one section coming up like that's pretty cool. Like I like I like the section even with all the little shots that I'm having trouble avoiding because it's just really cool it's just cool looking it's cinematic you know and you know it's like a one it's almost like a shoot it is a shooting section but only a short one wait there's a map huh but it's just a short one you know just a nice little bit of a visual variety and mechanical variety and that's cool Crap. Oh, damn it. Let's just uh, reset again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to dry run this, which always annoys me. Hmm, I may have more time to play more of these games though since some of my credits for my schooling came in and so getting my carry certificate I have like five to seven classes I won't need to take. Yeah, 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 something, something, something. Don't worry, Captain. I'm the plucky hero. Hey, buddy. 
just want to talk. Hey, there's a little dude. There's a little dude. I was like, I wish there was like little dudes that came out after you, like, you know, to make the scale more uh, concrete. And yeah. Fortunately, I guess it's a war crime to wound down to mech pilots, so. Why was there a dude in the other one, but in this one there's not? Oh, there he is. There's a little person. You, I'm taking you hostage. Okay, that's cool. Like when little dudes show up in games with robots. for one little dude running away at a time. That's one thing about Star Fox Zero, where you went into these carriers and stuff, and I'm like, I always kind of wanted to see little monkeys scurry away behind, like, a blast door when you went in, just to give it some sort of lived-in sense. You know, so it didn't feel like the carrier you were, you know, in was just some random obstacle course for an R-wing sized vehicle. Set. Apparently they really don't want you to turn off the jets until after you're firmly and at least a foot above the platform you want to land on or something. Yeah, it's, it's always a good idea. No one's going to be offended by the little men running around for scale. And I guess cybernator is a kind of a nothing word. Are there any other name option other options? More credits perhaps? Hmm. Aural's always, always been a weird word for me. Sounds so much like oral. So when you're saying like aural, it's just like, I don't know, you really have to overstress it. Better to not use that word at all. All right. This is the first level. I should be able to get it. I'm just going to, it seems like. There's nothing really stopping you from blasting past stuff. 
other than, you know, you won't get certain power upgrades. Yep. Been connected. Oh no. I'll destroy it. Oh, that guy definitely fell to his death. Come here. Stop. I have a shield. So we have to stop these mechs with guns and we have, what do we have to stop them with? Well, we're gonna give you this thin shield. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, never mind. It's a pretty good vertical jump for a little guy. In Gun Hazard, you can also get out of the mech, of course. Throw grenades or whatever. But yeah, I just... Star Fox Zero, with all that extra computing power, since you went into, like, ships and stuff, it was like, you should probably see little monkey men running away from you. Just like... Just like the tail end of them fleeing... There'd be little consoles that you could destroy, that kind of stuff. Instead, in that game, it was just like, oh, you got to the interior of the ship. What's the interior made of? Uh, just crystal nodes and little Roomba droids. Some speeder bikes, maybe, here and there. Uni uni unicycles with laser guns. Oh, Jake. Thing showing visual damage, like not just a little bit, like incrementally. No, this thing should be dead by now. Oof. That's a pretty a bad explosion. <laughs> like, it has very low detail. Maybe Star Fox has spoiled me. little crevices there. It does seem hard to do anything in terms of avoiding stuff. Oh boy. Hue on that asteroid in the background is pretty sick. I think my best course of action is just to avoid 
these turds. What did they say L and R did again? Probably didn't say anything. Oh man, my nose is so itchy. Hmm. giving me health. Right there. There he is. Oh, gosh. One of these pricks is supposed to give me health. Bad news bear. Oh boy. Flee. Oh, I've been hit. I mean, I find with these systems that have unlimited power, like the PS5, they're just a lot of things they focus on are kind of, I don't know, um, <laughs> very granular, like lighting and light refraction, things that make a difference. But when when you have these limited systems with that have like that are stronger in one thing than the other, then it kind of allows them to really like focus on their strengths to try to distract from their weaknesses, and it makes them look striking precautions oh well now I'm falling what is this game like I'm just in space Oh, boy. I don't know if I'm blowing anything up or if someone else is blowing something up. 
someone else is blowing something up, then I'm very concerned. Oh man, no, it's me. Oh yeah. Again, those are not very good looking <laughs> explosions, but we'll live. Oh boy. I'm out of missiles. I didn't realize there was an <laughs> a uh, what do you call it? A limited quantity. I think this green ship here looks pretty cool. But yeah, the curvature of the earth behind this is this is a good looking game. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it in my mind. <laughs> oh no! I thought I killed you. Oh come on. No, he got me. Ah, you know, it's blue. It's got water. It's earth. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. This, these turrets are very tricky. Oh boy. Shit. No, oh, it's falling. I thought it would despawn. No wonder I took a beating in here. Like, Got no room to maneuver. Got to do the slide more. If only because it's cool. Ow. to be health.
Well, seeing as this is my first go at this game, we may... I don't know, maybe we'll cut this stream short so I can practice this a little more. As is my way. I know how... <laughs> I know how some viewers can be unforgiving towards failure, especially with old games, because you know people are gonna, people are gonna wa come to watch a Cybernator video are gonna be people who've probably played Cybernator, probably played it that ridiculous amount that makes somebody good at Cybernator. So they just, I don't know. Obviously, you know, having not played it, I don't, I don't either desire to take the time to get that good nor will stream that entire process. Oh shit. You're kind of strong for a little turt. I'm just saying, like, if I stream this for a while, it's going to be a lot of failure going forward. Oh, health. Ah! Those big explosions were a little better. They kind of looked like just really blocky. And... Oh yeah, kill the little people. Ooh, I like the look of this. Is this the boss? It's probably a one hit kill. though that this game has no uh, no difficulty options whatsoever side of the ship. Okay, good. Little pricks keep getting in between my legs. There's only one little prick that belongs in between my legs. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm just hitting every shot. Oh boy. Oh, that hurt. Oh boy. Oh, that was a bad time to jump. Oh crap. I didn't. Ugh. Apparently, I slid there, which I did not mean to do. Ah, well. That is. Cybernator. I will beat that on next stream lord willing if i can do it and i don't have a heart attack before axley was a lot better about continues but also in axley if you like took three hits you died so you um so in a weird way not really it wasn't better about it you had more lives but less health in a life Ooh, do we miss this cutscene uh, I can't figure that out, out either, Matthew. Ooh. Look at all these anime stylings. Yeah. So... That's what that is. If my phone was alive at all, I could check what's next on my on my list. Okay. Yeah, you bet, Matthew Minch, you know. Thank you for stopping by. Everyone else who stopped by, thank you as well. So. Um, anyway. Uh, next stream will be more more cybernator slash assault to Vulcan. Uh, so if you enjoyed watching it, please stop by again. I think I'll have a recording of this also done up for those who, you know, I don't know how notifications work, but anyway, I think some, for some reason having them, these as recorded too somehow gets them out more, more better. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who knows? So, regardless, that's going to do it. So, thank you for stopping by. And, you know, God bless your night. And hopefully he blesses mine as well. <laughs> um, that said... This was Carl, and I am out. Bye-bye.